Welcome and thank you for tuning into our special segment. On our special segment today, I will be in conversation with the founders of Oromo Basketball Association, Jamal Galato and Beef Tutula. We will be discussing their organization's efforts, their community outreach, youth, women, and collective empowerment, and current political issues. Stay with us. Simade, <laughs> Asilale guma, asilale guma, 
Lami pasa guma, sabab pasa guma, ana pasa guma, asil la le guma, kero pasa guma, asil la le guma, raya ra, arsira, bale ra, kujira, wala ka, shawara, jemara, arakira, borana, bolora, karayu. Welcome, Jamal and Beef to Torami 11. We're very excited to have you here today. If you guys could go ahead and introduce yourselves to our audience. Yeah, uh, my name is Jamal Galato. Uh, I'm one of the board members on OBA. Uh, I would say I'm one of the founder also. Uh, I have my other colleague, uh, Beef 2, with us. I'll let Beef 2 introduce herself. All right, my name is Beef Tatula. I want to say thank you for having us here today. Um, I'm part of the board member for Oroma Basketball Association. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for you know, accepting our invitation and coming here and sure. sitting down with me. Um, so, that. Oromo Basketball Association, what is it about why when you, you guys are both founding members, oh. when you guys are finding founding this organization, what was the inspiration, the goal, and the vision um, that made you guys? For OBA, uh, basically, the reason why we started OBA was we had a fan base, enough fan base that uh, kids... Uh, that wanted to play basketball, mm -hmm. and with uh, with Osfana, they really didn't give the opportunity for the for the younger kids that that grew up in America that mm -hmm. plays basketball. So we came up in 2015. Me, Roba, uh, came up with uh, organization to start playing basketball. It literally started in one day, and three days later we had a tournament going. It was uh, during Osfana. It was during Osfana. Yes, okay. it was. Uh, it was during that time, mm -hmm. and our first three teams was uh, Portland, Gator team. Okay. They're from Portland, and then we had two other Minnesota teams that from the who played soccer, who, who played soccer, but, but some of them played. came and played ba basketball. Okay. Uh, our tournament always started that Wednesday of okay. final weekend. Yeah. Uh, and we ended it on Saturday, and we, I remember we always ended the tournament right before uh, the championship game of the soccer. So. Or our players that play basketball, they can go watch the last game. Okay. Yeah, I didn't join until 2016. Okay. And that was, I had a call from Roba. He was like, you know, I see you play basketball. You know, why don't you come join us? And that's when I joined. And I think, you know, I was like, why not? You know, it gives opportunities yeah. to kids who didn't get to play basketball in middle school or high school, allows them to showcase their talent on the basketball court. So that's why I joined OBA. Okay, so you play basketball. Yeah, I play basketball you, as well. Did you play your whole life? Did you play for your school? Yeah, pretty much. I played until junior college. So all through middle school, high school, and JUCO. Okay, and what put, is there positions? That you um, I played basketball? point guard, shooting guard, wow. and power forward. Pretty much all around because I was like, our teams, uh, I was like probably like the tallest. So they put me as like the big. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I played all around. Okay, well, that's awesome. So when you joined... Um, when you, when you joined Roba and Jamal, did you you know did you have a specific goal because of your experiences growing up here and participating and playing in bas playing basketball? Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily see that in our communities, mm -hmm. as he alluded to. Like there isn't a specific program or you know or space for mm -hmm. basketball. It's usually we all get together for Osfana, that Osfana week. Yeah. Was there something that you're like, you know, no, we need this for us. Oh, or, you know, the kids growing up here, the kids, people who are just interested in basketball as a oh, whole. Oh, yeah, for sure, including girls. Yeah. Because um, I know with soccer, there was always like two women's team. Yeah. You know, I wanted girls to also be a part of OBA and come out and play too because they don't get that opportunity 
often. Okay. Um, but yeah, always allowing girls, you know, girls empowerment. I'm all for that. We're designated a certain sector of society. Like mm -hmm. we're designated certain behaviors and certain, certain conduct, like our normative ways of being. And you coming out and saying, you know, I'm a hooper, like I'm, I'm going to hoop. Is mm -hmm. like, it's a, you know, that journey for you and like, and, and, you know, what empowered you, you know, to be mm -hmm. like that? Is it your upbringing? Is it your, was it your surrounding? And what would, do you want to do with that, with this confidence and this passion that you have? I think it comes from my upbringing. Like my yeah. parents, uh, they're very supportive, both my mom and my dad. Mm -hmm. I have all brothers. I only have one little sister. Okay. So it's like, you know, I saw them hooping. I was like, sh I want to like, them. Why me? Why can I, you know? <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, it comes from my parents' support. Um, you know, they're all about women empowerment as well. They're all about health because at the end of the day, even when I'm hooping, mm -hmm. you know, health. Yeah. Um, they really care about our, he our health. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it, it comes from that and also like you know my coaches mm -hmm. um they were always for women empowerment mm -hmm. and you know i've always had people around me who mentor me and i mean that's why i chose the path of basketball and going to oba and including yeah. women and girls yeah. into that um environment um but yeah it comes from my upbringing and environment as well and then my in my in my opinion like uh when we when we talk about women empowerment, yeah. I would say one of the things I would say with my mom, I used to play high school sports. Uh, I used to play football and basketball, and I played f football in college too. Okay. Uh, my mom used to always come to my game. All the games. And she didn't even speak. Uh, she didn't even speak English. Okay. So and she would go sit with my, you know, with the f white family. Yeah. <laughs> I would say. <laughs> and you know, they'll have a conversation, mm -hmm. and sometimes I'd be like, I don't even know what they're talking about, but. Mm -hmm. Her coming to my game shows empowerment for me as mm -hmm. like you know a woman coming who doesn't even speak the language, mm -hmm. showing you know showing that uh that love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our women I would say are they're you know yeah they're always there to support they're the pillars our of our society yeah. Yeah. and a blanket mm -hmm. yeah. and they they empower all of us and so my question is now you as someone that you know grew up looking up to this mother who was very supportive of you what are you going to do going forward in your in your personal life and also professional life or you know in this organization to really empower more of our girls and more of our women um uh, me i was i would say uh respecting our women mm -hmm. is the most important thing uh you know anywhere we go uh rather than bringing down a woman and saying like oh she's a she's a girl she mm -hmm. can't do this and not nah, give the give her the opportunity mm -hmm. see if she can mm -hmm. you know it's like they give guys opportunities mm -hmm. so let's give them the opportunity uh and that's what i would do mm -hmm. you know i have nieces and nep i have a lot of nieces okay so i always tell them you can do whatever you want to mm -hmm. do basically uh i know people say it a lot but i tell them Straight up, you can, you know, because because they can, yeah, right? you can. They've, like, shown, they've shown, yep. Um, so, and with her helping as an OBA, I always tell Beef to like, this, you know, this is really empowerment because you're playing basketball in front of you know guys in our community. It doesn't really happen. Yeah. So her joining us and giving that power for our women, I really appreciate that. And did you feel, did you feel supported when you got in there? Were there how many other girls were there with you, or were you like um, the first? You I, I was probably like, the first. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I know now. I know a few Oromo girls who actually play at that, like you know, high level, level yeah. who are playing high school. Um, yeah, high school for now, and they're you know going off to college yeah. soon, and it's beautiful to see because. Mm -hmm. Like five, six, seven years ago, I when was you were playing. Oromo. I didn't know any other yeah. Oromo girls, yeah. and you know they're in Toronto, they're in North America, and it's just mm -hmm. a beautiful scene. Seeing that there's more Oromo girls who are going into sports, who are playing at we that have level. different interests. Then, and you know? yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's not just basketball. Yeah, you know, you see soccer, mm -hmm. tennis. I know a few Oromo girls who play tennis yeah. at a high school level right now. Okay. So it, yeah, and track too. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a beautiful scene okay so like what is the goal like so far it looks like you guys are growing what's yeah. that process has looked like for you guys uh in my honest opinion at first it was rough uh just like any pro uh, organization that starts from the bottom yeah it was rough we had i would say we had three teams uh, when we first started yeah uh and then we couldn't find a facility that was the hardest part okay. our first game that we played actually was outside so okay. the first and the then first, outside court it was outside court and then after that the following day we got the opportunity to get a gym over in st paul uh a place that i work at but yeah 
Okay. What's your vision for women? Is there how many women's or girls? Um, girls. So the most teams are there. Most now. team we girls team we had was six teams. That was like the most. That was in 2017. That's impressive. So like over the year we kind of slowed down, but like my goal is to have at least like the men's team. They always have 11 or 10 or nine. Okay. I want to have you know be up there with them. Um, but yeah, like most, like the majority of the Oromo girls who participate, you know, they play high school, the ones that I know. And we also include like the Somali community okay. as well. So, it, you know, it's more competition, more girls, and it just looks good. Cause at the end of the day, it's for girls empowerment for me. Exactly. Um, but yeah, like my goal is to have more girls team join. Okay. So you guys work closely with the Somali youth here. And so I know you guys just had a tournament, which we will talk about that. Um, and I noticed kids from outside of the states. And so it's, you know, it's, is it for the whole United States? Is your hope to, you know, to make this association all like global, international, or how? Our, our goal is to, for right now, yeah. is to just get everybody in the United States. Okay. Uh, eventually, we're going to get big of those fun. And we still have a team from Australia, Norway. Wherever the sport where people live. And okay. as of right now, the, the teams that we mostly get is Northern American teams where we had one team from Toronto uh, in 2017. Okay. And then they came back and played in 2019. Okay. Um, but that's the only team that's out of the country. But most of the teams that we get for the boys, mm -hmm. uh, for the men's, I would say, uh, it's mostly from uh, uh, Minnesota, Atlanta, uh, Texas, uh, Seattle, Portland, uh, DMV area. That's most of the teams that come from Colorado. In Colorado, Colorado. too. Yeah, so missing key key people there. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you guys? Uh, I know. Do you guys meet online? How do you, you know these teams that come? Is it through Osfana that you guys meet and talk about this, uh, or was there a separate conversation separate from Osfana where you guys reached out to each other like we'll build a basketball association? Uh, as a group, I mean, the first thing that we did yeah. was uh. We kind of had everybody come to Osfana, and we told them we'd throw a tournament. Okay. Uh, I would say a couple of years after, we beefed to open up an OBA uh, page for us, and then we started having contact with teams through OBA. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the age group? Like, let's say people want to join. Um, um, so there's a youth team, okay. a men's league, and then a women's league. The youth is usually from like 15 to like 17, okay. and then the men's league is like from 18 and up. And then women's is 15 to like 25. Um, so it varies. Okay. Yeah. And how can they reach you? I know I spoke to you guys a little bit about, you know, what your social media presence looks like. Um, if, you know, youth uh, usually use Instagram. Mm -hmm. You guys said you guys have an Instagram page. Do you guys plan on building a website? Uh, are you guys present on other social media? Yeah, I think that's one of the goals um, is just growing from here. But as of now, we only have um, on Instagram, OBA underscore hoops is where anybody can reach us. And I mean, our page has been growing um, ever since the recent tournament. Yeah. Uh, we had over like 30 followers and just like that weekend because yeah. like some people didn't know about OBA and now they know and they're excited they're already excited for the next event exactly um, that includes yeah. me because yeah. I did not know until I went on Instagram and mm -hmm. Abdi here um, we knew that there was a tournament happening mm -hmm. and when I saw that and there was a lot of youth from across the United States yeah. that I noticed that was really encouraging so absolutely you guys are gonna grow um, my next question is at that tournament that you guys had um, you guys had proceeds from that tournament. Mm -hmm. And as an association and an organization, you guys decided to donate uh, those proceeds. Mm -hmm. Could you guys talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah. Um, so when we first, uh, like, you know, logistics and everything with the tournament, it was like back in January where you posted the flyer. Yeah. We just said, you know, the money, the proceeds is going to go back to Oromia. We didn't know exactly when, like where, and all, uh, but you know, it ended up going to uh, the Wallo, what's going on in Wallo. Mm -hmm. We all know what's going on in Wallo. Yeah. And it was through the Macha Tulama Association that we had donated the funds. Um, you know, what's, and at that time, that's what was taking place like yeah. that week. And then two weeks before our tournament was uh, the situation that happened in Wallo. Mm -hmm. And we're like, you know what? 
let that money go to one law. They need it right now. And at the end of the day, you know, we're helping our people in any way. And it's whether it's having a basketball tournament, a soccer tournament, anything that could, you know, help our people. We're like, you know, we might as well send it out there. That's why that's why we named the tournament Tokuma. Tokuma. Kuma. Yeah. yeah. That that was really inspiring. When I heard that, I was like, these are leaders, you know, that was that was really such an inspirational story. Um, mm -hmm. And I am sure it's going to inspire a lot of youth and a lot, including me and everybody that's going to be watching this. Program. And I like the part that like the people from mm -hmm. other state, you know, yeah. the people who don't even play basketball, they, sh mm -hmm. they came show up because, yeah. you know, it's, it's for Tokuma, it's for our people, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and get, having our people in one place. It's probably, you know, it's the real the thing that we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. and having them support us is yeah i would say i really we really appreciate it yeah absolutely and i as you both alluded to you know every event um every decisions that we make they have far-reaching implications mm -hmm. and i know um you guys are active in other organizations as well and you guys have a lot of opinions that you have about what's going on back home um we're all directly Im impacted by what happens to our families back home and i know you guys have opinions on what is happening like what do you what do you guys think of you know current events that are happening in back home uh, in oromia and different parts wallo obviously mm -hmm. is something that you guys are closely following mm -hmm. um and we've seen some really gruesome images on social media and i know it takes a toll on all of us um just talk a little bit about that and how you guys feel what's your take on what's happening right now yeah i mean you know that's Ethiopia. Ethiopia is a mafia state. Yeah. Um, but as far as like, you know, the violence, the atrocities that's taking place, it's it, it's it's so sad. Yeah, it's um, like as for me as an individual, I mean, you look at Ethiopia right now, Oromia specifically, mm -hmm. I honestly feel like, you know, the only organization or the only group right now that's doing something mm -hmm. is OLA, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, with the media the Amara media mm -hmm. who are trying to portray OLA mm -hmm. as terrorists. It's mm -hmm. completely wrong. It's completely against their policies to, um, you know, hit on innocent civilians. They're completely against that. Mm -hmm. And for me, I feel like they're the only ones that are doing something right now, mm -hmm. you know, OLA. And then you have people in the diaspora community, like what we did recently, mm -hmm. give back to the people, mm -hmm. you know, humanitarian aids, mm -hmm. um, ensuring that, you know, their safety, um, but yeah, that's that's what I think. I live in America, uh, where politicians can say whatever they want mm -hmm. and still live their normal life. They don't have to get arrested. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't or killed or killed. <laughs> so in our country, that's the problem. So I don't see democracy. Mm -hmm. That's uh, in my opinion. I don't. If you guys see democracy, tell me where you see de democracy. Mm -hmm. There's no democracy back home. You know. So mm -hmm. that's what I think. Obviously, this isn't a political. Uh, the conversation but the decision you guys made to donate the proceeds of your tournament was a political position that you guys took as uh, as an association yep. and I am a firm believer that our youth have a say in what happens in our politics um, in our social lives and mm. so I really appreciate you both sharing that with me and while we're on this topic I know Things were always, as she said, Ethiopia has it's said it, it's a, it was always from foundation and a violent empire, but things have really deteriorated these past couple of years, and especially after the death of Haj Alu. And I know the death of Haj Alu uh, especially impacted the youth, especially youth who were born and raised here, who really didn't have much of a connection with the Oromuma, and in conversation, who say, you know, the reason Haj Alu meant so much to me is because his music connected me to who I am and made me proud of who I am. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give you guys, I know it impacted you guys uh, on a personal level and also collectively to say a little bit about, you know, what you guys felt when you heard about his death and the aftermath of his death uh in my opinion uh, 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 the way i look at it is that he's not even a singer i feel like he taught us about oromo history through his music mm -hmm. and uh and told us the things that you know we didn't know as a kid uh jordan the kids that were born here they got the opportunity to learn about uh oromo masani they looked it to be uh understand what was going on back home too mm -hmm. and i feel like he was more than a, a singer in my eyes he was a uh, 
Absolutely. Revolutionary person. Mm-hmm. And man, I was really sad the day he died. Uh, I was I thought it was a fake news because mm-hmm. anything that comes on Facebook, I don't believe it until I see it on Google. So mm-hmm. I literally Google his name mm-hmm. to find out the truth. And mm-hmm. it really hit me. Yeah, I think it took a toll on a lot of youth. Like for me, um, let's say like five years ago, I didn't speak. I found out him fluently. Mm-hmm. So it was through his music where I would like get words out and I like ask mm-hmm. my parents, like, what does this mean? Um, so, you know, he wasn't just like he said, he was just a signer. He was an activist. Yeah. Uh, you know, he history, you know, through his music, let alone. Mm-hmm. Um, but it took a toll on everybody. Mm-hmm. It was I didn't believe it at first as well mm-hmm. until like I got confirmation through another media because I didn't believe Facebook just like he said. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's it took a huge toll on everybody. It was globally known. Yeah, globally known. It was a yeah, and Oscars. one thing. Um, so our trophies from this t- recent tournament, it was uh, dedicated to him. It was the Ebisa and Hachalu Award mm-hmm. for both the men's and women's. That was like the tro- what it said on the trophy. Yeah. So we we wanted to you know show respect through that as well. It's gonna be like so that. Honor. So we're gonna honor, to honor both Ebisa and Hachalu uh, mm-hmm. in our trophies okay. uh, from this tournament on okay. uh, because. As you guys know, Abisa died about 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, he was in his, for the same cause as Hachalu, mm-hmm. uh, you know, bringing our people up, uh, you know, giving our people from the dark, mm-hmm. you know, to tell the truth. So that's what our trophy we name after. Uh, They're both of your trophies are going to mm-hmm. be named after them going forward as well. Yep. Yeah, that is that is an amazing way to pay a tribute. Um, I just wanted to give you guys. Uh, that chance because I know it meant a lot to you guys and for you guys to make those uh, decisions. So going forward, um, your plans for, you know, your organization is for it to grow. Um, so if parents want to reach you guys, let's say, you know, there are parents whose kids are excited about it, about, you know, maybe necessarily didn't play soccer. And now that they hear about basketball, that they're excited and they want to reach out to you, how can they reach out to you? Or even youth, you know, who are in high school or in grade school, like middle school, like when you started, who are just starting out mm-hmm. and would like to participate. Do you guys have any, um, other events coming up? Um, um, uh- I would say our next event will, will be with Osfana during okay. Osfana time. Mm-hmm. Uh, as of right now, we're not sure when Osfana is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, if the parents or kids that want to reach us, we do have social media mm-hmm. uh, on OBA Hoops uh, on Instagram. And we're looking forward to opening other social medias so we can uh, connect with the youth more. Uh, yeah. Yeah, especially the parents, because that's what we want. We want, like, you know, the older generation to be present at these events, because that's the only, you know, people where mi- groups of people we're missing. Um, so, yeah, Facebook, most definitely. We're going to try to make that one of our goals to expand our networking. Okay. Um, but as for now, it's just Instagram. And then we need our, we need our elders, I would say, mm-hmm. to, you know, come to the games, uh, yeah. you know, do it. The kids that are playing, yeah, and yeah, yeah, support and regatta, Jolentes and regatta. So you know, it just it shows uh, our people are coming together. So it shows love. That tokuma, yeah, that tokuma. Yeah, tokuma. Yeah. Yeah. I know you talked a little bit about like when your involvement in basketball was within the Somali community, who are not even predominantly, almost one hundred percent Muslim, mm-hmm. and. I actually recently, a couple of months ago, saw on Instagram like a video that just. I was in awe. Her name mm-hmm. was Fitria Mohammed, mm-hmm. and she was uh, basically like profiled by Nike, mm-hmm. and she was an amazing hooper. And I was just like in awe because religion obviously plays a big role in uh, you know the choices that we make, even, but also in the Western countries where you know there are um, there are barriers because mm-hmm. like even uniform, something as simple as a uniform, mm-hmm. if you're not accommodated to wear your hijab or, you know, or to observe your faith, it's yeah. really hard to right. get involved. If you want to say a little bit more about that? Yeah. First of all, Fitria, she's an amazing woman. She has the vision. Mm-hmm. I'm proud of her. Yeah. Um, but as far as like religion and sports, for me, I've always like covered on the court. Yeah. Um, you know, most girls that I know, um, they would have like long sleeves mm-hmm. if they're playing basketball, long sleeve tights, mm-hmm. shorts over it, jersey over it. Yep. And they're like either tie their hijab like the regular way or like mm-hmm. t- tie back like how, how, how I have it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, it 
like the way I convinced my parents, like, and they knew is health. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm playing basketball and I'm taking care of my body. Yeah. And I think a lot of uh, like Muslim parents, like they understand that part of yep. it is just, you know, are there men watching? Are there boys watching? That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I think over the years, it's, it's not going to be a problem because a lot of uh, Muslim parents are allowing their girls mm-hmm. um, to participate in sports, any type of sports. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's going to be a problem maybe like 10 years from now because having men watch or like boys watch, that's the problem. That's the only problem I've observed. Because every time like we would have like basketball tournaments, like with my other, so, like the Somali community, yeah. the parents are always asking, are there boys? Yeah. And that becomes a problem. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're usually covered. And I mean, that's what, you know, Islam teaches mm-hmm. cover. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. What's your take on that? Um, I know it's not just hijabs, even in different sports. We see uh, there were a lot of scandals where a coach or or someone was trying to cut like a kid's Kid hair dreads. because they had dreads. And so for minority groups, you know, who are already, you know, faced with so many barriers to, you know, participating even, to, you know, at that level, you get to that level and you're performing at that level and things like that can be really discouraging. And I know you played basketball and football. Yeah. Um, what was your experience uh, with that? With that, uh, I would say like being a Muslim kid, mm-hmm. uh, playing sports, um, I used to fast during tour days where we have two tour days practice. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if a group of other uh, teammates were asking, like, yo, this is, this is inhumane, this is impossible. And how you doing this? Mm-hmm. Like part of religion, we gotta do it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then other thing to get back to uh, what Beef Two was talking about. Uh, so like I, I feel like that's really empowerment. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, both you guys. Um, I think that's a really actually important talk. I have a little sister. She played. Um, she still plays. She's still in, in high school. Um, she wears a hijab and. Sometimes, you know, I worry about, you know, like if she comes back and, you know, kids don't always tell their parents mm. or their family members yeah. the things that happen. But I always worry about, you know, a comment that might have been made or, you know, some some ignorance. Some, yeah. Some, some people are like, yeah, some people are so biased. Yeah. So I think in my opinion, it's like for the kids who are, you know, Muslim and they're putting up shoes, you know, mm. uh, to be honest, it's, it's some of the people will uh be say some racial things mm-hmm. to those kids and and what i would say from my side is just to uh ignore those people mm-hmm. go go enjoy it mm-hmm. uh do what you do because you love doing what, what you were doing mm-hmm. and uh for the people who are uh who are uh, against that mm-hmm. i just feel like they need to just get out the box mm-hmm. you know open your mind up let, mm-hmm. let you know let the girls be girls let, let them have fun let get them have the same opportunity that you know your, your boy's having. Mm-hmm. So that's what I was, that's the only take I would have on it. Yeah, I actually have a story on that. Um, in my junior year of high school, I had went to a Christian school yeah. to play basketball. I was the only Muslim. Yeah. The whole stand was like all white people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I was, you know, playing the game. My team was very diverse. You know, we yeah. had white, black. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to Columbia Heights. Okay. But it was, I would, I kept hearing comments. They're like, you're Muslim. You don't belong here. Do you not see that cross? I was like, man, you see, I've been to Texas yeah. and y'all know Texas. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see nothing like that. I've yeah. never, like, I, it completely discouraged me. I was like, I don't even want to be here. I want to just go home. Right. Like but I have my, racism. yeah, I had like my teammates back me up okay. on that. And they, yo, it's not cool. It's 20, at that time it was like, what, 2018, yeah. 17? Yeah. So it was, yeah, I was completely discouraged. But mm-hmm. then I realized, you know, these people there. Yeah, some people are ignorant. Cause you're ignorant. Mm-hmm. You don't, you know, you're, you're going to a Christian school. If, you know, you should know something about Islam at least, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, you should appreciate and acknowledge other people's religion. Yeah, you see I'm different, but, you know, at but least, to even you know, say something like that, yeah. to experience something like mm-hmm. that, it's, it's that, you know. Yeah. yeah, obviously, you know, as you you're become kind of numb to those comments yeah. at some point. Mm-hmm. But, you know, just to hear about it is that discouragement that you yeah. felt in that moment. It's like mm-hmm. such a burden that you should really shouldn't have to face yeah, that because exactly. you're competing and you know you're right. doing exactly what they're doing mm-hmm. but you know that's an unfortunate fact of life but i'm so yeah. glad that you know you're able to just brush it off and you at oh, least yeah. had a supportive mm-hmm, team for sure which is yeah. important yeah some people are just ignorant yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah and there's nothing you can do about someone <laughs> there's nothing ignorant, there's right? nothing like, i remember being a little kid i was like in sixth grade we're in a city called wakonia yeah, yeah 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 and out there playing basketball and like 
literally I was outside throwing a ball in and and the mom like they she called me the n word so I just I just like like froze I'm sure so yeah right in front of the ref there. yeah and then I just I looked at the ref he didn't say nothing so I walked up to my coach like coach she just called me uh, you know she called me n word mm -hmm. you know my coach just he got fired up yeah but uh yeah some people are just they're just some people are just mm -hmm. ignorant they just mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know. Some people are just ignorant. To me and just yeah, and, and, so and biased. Yeah, and they're they're just so close minded mm -hmm. that you know they don't see the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Towards the end, uh, you guys are getting close to that, anyways. If you guys want to send a message to our community and our viewers who are going to be watching you guys and going to be inspired by your stories, this is your chance. Um. Yeah. When in and I'm seeing an in Kabu. Um. You know, we're in diaspora, especially one that did turn into far. You know, umata hengargara. Um, ake hena hana ha basketball tournament he go ne ture man like inka walik amne len kara wallo de me ture. Abson kuna adada gegen famti. Um, so one hundu ma fi you umata hena kbirda banu. Let's not stop in rafina kaa. Sadi na manta na tokum majabe san sa kanati. Um, aga suma damsin kia. Yeah, I'm thinking of the Namoni, Romota Tanit, Walhagar Garu, Bethany, Uri Alagakun, Nujurani, Wugawai, Nujurani, so Walgaru Kamna, Tokumak and Hachesuno, Uri Jaspora Tanit, Namakina Kabiyajru, Gargara, Yo in Gargare, and Gargara. You got the Batus, Sunny. Dam Saba Ebereda by Ehawasikinas Kagarit Fulatiriamana. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing so much wisdom and so much leadership with us. Um, I think it's going, you guys are going to go on to inspire um, many, many lives. And we hope to have you guys back here for uh, more events that you guys will be hosting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having us. Oromia yeah. 11, Galatoma Zinjara, Jarakanaf. Jalan kun kan kau biar bicara mesti kau ramu hundun gagal suri jatuh galatoma jenna bifti maju berpatah jatuh galatoma isan injera horabola devana you know sewaj injera rice and is jabada oromia eleven we see you guys jabada thank you that means a lot thank you guys now I'm all hyped galatoma eh besar gan ne angkat titirah nice